But first, make no mistake, we have a government in Canberra that's determined to change the country and change it beyond recognition. Before the election, the PM was ever so eager to reassure voters, despite his long history inside Labor's left, left faction, that he was safe change. So he played Mr Nice Guy up against Scott Morrison, who was really on the nose, and said nothing about his plans for higher taxes, bigger government and upending our national and cultural symbols. But that's what it's all been about from day one of this government. It's been more and more of the Green left's long march through the institutions, mostly by stealth, in the hope that you won't notice really what's happening. But when you're awake to it, when we do say no, like we resoundingly did last year on The Voice, the Green left just carry on as if what we think as mere voters doesn't matter. The latest move towards an ever more powerful Big Brother government is Greg Combe's appointment as head of the Future Fund, the $200 billion sovereign wealth fund that's supposed to maximise returns on taxpayer investments to help pay public service and defence superannuation. As with superannuation more generally, Labor does not regard wealth as belonging to the people who earn it. It thinks your assets are there to be mobilised by government for the purposes of the state. To Labor, people and property are ultimately at the service of the state rather than the other way around. Now, Greg Combe, the former ACTU boss and climate change minister in the Rudd-Gillard government, is currently chairman of something called the Net Zero Economy Agency, and has also been the chair of the Industry Super Fund peak body called Industry Super Australia. Now, incredibly, this Green left functionary was asked by the Morrison government to help advise on pandemic policy. But that's another story of the coalition being inclined to surrender to its ideological enemies. But what this latest appointment shows is just how dead set determined the Albanese government is on conscripting your money for its purposes. The same government, remember, that said your tax cut was safe, that your super was safe, that your power bill would decline, but then it did the exact opposite. And that now says utterly implausibly that your investment nest egg, your super, is safe with them. Come on. As head of this net zero agency, Combe says that Australia needs to unlock, quote, $3 trillion in retirement savings to fund green energy boondoggles and social housing projects, the very projects that the private sector will not support without hefty taxpayer subsidies because they just don't make economic sense. Well, now he's Dracula in charge of the blood bank because of chairman, as chairman of the Future Fund, there's no doubt that Combe will follow through with his push to use the fund's $200 billion balance sheet to invest in all the green stuff that his climate minister under Rudd he was obsessed with, not what will give the fund its best returns. Now, it's no wonder that the outgoing chairman, the man who set up the Future Fund, Peter Costello, who did it, of course, at a time when governments routinely ran surpluses, remember those, well, he has warned the government to keep its, quote, sticky fingers out of the way. And former Commonwealth Bank boss David Murray, well, he's called Combe a political appointment, who could, he says, undermine the Future Fund's independence. Greg Combe has, to quote Murray, been a cheerleader for this nation-building stuff, he said. But what else could you expect from this government, from a treasurer whose stated policy objective is not to make the economy more productive by cutting tax and red tape, but to force big business to contribute corporate dollars to Labor's political agenda? Now, Chalmers is fully no one when he said, as he appointed Combe, that the Future Fund needs, and I quote, fresh thinking, he says, fresh leadership, notwithstanding the fact that Costello's leadership has delivered 9% annual returns over the past decade. Now, as Australians, we're going to wake up here to Labor's agenda because they're not even two years into office and the pace of their change is scarifying. They have appointed a big government lefty type to run the Productivity Commission and they've reworked the Reserve Bank's charter to include more social objectives. It's why Labor are changing the superannuation rules to limit people's ability to use their super 
to help with the purchase of their first home as originally proposed by the coalition at the last election. But it doesn't stop there. Ask yourself, why has big business suddenly become so vocal in support of left-wing political causes, such as the voice, gay marriage, gender identity, trans debate, as well as changing Australia Day? Now, have you ever asked yourself, how are the unions so well funded despite their membership falling from some 50% of workers to scarcely 10% of the private sector workforce. Well, look no further than these industry super funds. They now control almost one and a half trillion dollars of your money and have about seven million members. And over the past two years, they reportedly gave 25 million to the unions whose leaders dominate these super boards. Then of course, much of that money was then recycled to the Labor Party. Now, why this is so dangerous to market economies like ours is that it's these same industry super funds who now own a large slab of our public companies. And they use this ownership stake to push their woke mates onto boards and to push their green left political agenda. Now, when Bill Kelty and Paul Keating set up the compulsory super scheme more than three decades ago now, well, they knew exactly what they were doing. They wanted to capture capitalism, to change its focus from freedom to control and from economic reform to social change. They could see then that workers didn't want to join unions anymore. And they knew that unions were essential to Labor's power base and its funding. So they forced workers into union dominated industry super funds, which would then keep the unions solvent and drive Labor's political and social agenda, which it's done in spades. All the while, of course, Liberals were asleep at the wheel, watching it happen, but lacking the guts because of left-wing moderates in the Liberal Party room to do much to stop it. Now, let's hope that the next coalition government has the wit to see what's been done and the courage and guts to reverse it.